Good morning or afternoon, depending on where you are. It is officially lunchtime here in Arkansas. And welcome to Lily's Show and Tell series. If you're not familiar with Lily, we are a group of librarians and information and literacy professionals who promote lifelong information literacy. If you want to know more about Lily or join Lily, I have my email in my Zoom name. You can email me or just send me a private message too. Before we begin, I have a couple of quick housekeeping things. First of all, you should have got the notice that this is being recorded. So I will try to get the recording out by the end of the week. Maybe tomorrow we'll see how fast I can get it out, but as quick as I can, I will get it to you. Feel free to put your questions in the chat. I'll keep an eye on the chat. That way um, Roberta doesn't have to, and I will make a note of them. And at the end, I'll try to make sure we get through all the questions. And then if you want to present yourself, Lily is looking for more presenters for show, our show and tell series. So again, you can send me an email. So now to our speaker. Roberta Robin Sullivan is the teaching and learning strategist at the University of Buffalo and the director of the Exploring Emergency Technologies for Lifelong Learning and Success at the State University of New York. So thank you for joining us. Thank you. Thank you for allowing me the opportunity to share with all of you. Uh, I look forward to having a great conversation and would love to hear um, everybody's input regarding how um, this process might be useful to you in your positions. Um, I would love to get a general idea of who I'm talking with. And if you could please put um, your name and maybe uh, you know the library you're with or organization that you're with and um, if you have any special interests um, that might be relating to this uh, online professional development activity that I'm going to share, I would love to see that in the chat. So please, um, you know, just kind of list them out there and I can see the chat in my window. Um, and uh, it'll just help me try to gear things directly to the things that you are interested in. So um, it's great. Thank you for everybody's putting that information in there. So my name, um, I'm Robin Sullivan, and I'm going to talk to you today about the Exploring Emerging Technologies for Lifelong Learning and Success initiative. This is sponsored through the State University of New York, and we have a really short URL that is hopefully easy to remember so that you can commit it to memory, use the um, professional development activities for yourself and also promote them through the libraries that you are working with. Um, so my full name is Roberta Robin Sullivan, but everybody calls me Robin. Please call me Robin. Um, if you need to look me up at the University at Buffalo directory, you then need to find me under Roberta. If I have to sign off on something, Roberta is the legal name. And my role, I am with the University at Buffalo Libraries. We are a large Research One institution in the SUNY system. SUNY has about 64 different campuses. And uh, my role is as a teaching and learning strategist. Basically, I'm an instructional designer to help faculty, staff, and students throughout the entire campus to um, learn about uh, information literacy and media literacy, digital literacy, improving their skills. How do faculty uh, make use of emerging technologies to help students learn, um, help with their research? That's kind of my main goal. My email address um, is rrs at buffalo.edu. And I am going to stick that in the chat. I will also share the slides after today's session um, so that you can take a look at those. So there is my email address. And I'm also going to put in the URL for the SUNY MTech project. Give me just a second to type and talk at the same time. Uh, SUNY.edu slash MTech. And that's E-M-T-E-C-H for Exploring Emerging Technologies. So this is the project that we're going to talk about. Um, I introduced you to myself. Um, I'm the project lead. 
have been the project lead since about 2012 when we got our first grant um, that follows this model. It started out with faculty professional development only through the SUNY system with the goal to trickle down the skills to students. Um, everybody needs to be technology savvy, very comfortable using technology tools, just like they can learn how to read and write. Um, so we were helping faculty increase their understanding so they can give creative and uh, in-depth assessments using technology tools that are um, appropriate to their goals. And um, then after about five years, we thought, well, this is equally as relevant for students in higher ed. And so we kind of revamped the project. It was called the Tools of Engagement Project in its early days. And we revamped it into what is now the Exploring Emerging Technologies MOOC. Um, there's been a team of people throughout the SUNY system who have participated to help build this um, project. And um, I'm the principal investigator and continue as the project director. Nicole Simon is a STEM professor uh, who teaches in, in engineering, physics, and technology department at Nassau Community College. Um, and there are a few other critical folks. Um, Sheree Van Putten is an instructional designer with Binghamton University, another one of the SUNY R1. And Chris Marchese is also really critical. She is an associate professor of business administration with Nassau Community College. Please feel free to reach out to us as needed. And um, so a big premise behind this project is that there are so many choices of technologies that are out there, so many that are now freely available and able to be used. And you, know, you heard the slogan, there's an app for that. There are apps, there are web pages, there are information for just about everything. And so these change all the time. The selection continually grows. Um, each tool has a different purpose. Uh, many tools have different variations in the quality. And so how is somebody supposed to know which tool they're supposed to select? Well, that's where mTech comes in. Um, mTech is discovery-based learning. And the idea is that participants would explore and reflect on innovative and creative uses of emerging technologies. Uh, many of the technologies we talk about, audio, video, blogs, simulations, uh, photo collections. I'll go into depth uh, when I talk about the wiki, all the different tools that we have available to us in this project. So we are all learners in this new frontier. Um, a quote that I like to use is that adults with tech access tools are more likely to be lifelong learners and rely on the internet to pursue knowledge. And in a way that internet helps us greatly um, we have a question, we no longer need to travel to a local library to find the answer. Very often we have a device that is in the palm of our hands or at our disposal easily that will allow us to learn what it is that we're trying to learn. And um, through MTech, one of the biggest sections is on lifelong learning. It's the very introductory model. and um, we cover some features about um, you know, what does it mean to be a lifelong learner? How can you gather a growth mindset um, so that you are, you know, the more you try, the more likely you get, you'll understand something. People are not born, um, you know, not able to do math. If they apply themselves and think strategically about that learning process, anybody can master anything with enough practice. And um, so um, also in lifelong learning, we talk about open educational resources. Um, we provide um, uh, resources for creative, understanding creative commons and copyright. Some of these, um, you know, accessibility issues, these are some of the basic ideas that anybody should know if they're going to be 
working in the emerging technologies field um, or in any field, really. These all come into play. Many times a job may not have a tech component to it, but you might need to do a marketing scheme using social media. This project, this learning opportunity will help you um, understand some of the processes that will create effective multimedia campaigns. Um, I'm going to play this video and it is just a one minute video, um, just gives you a little bit of overview about the project and hopefully um, uh, somebody can give me the thumbs up if you hear the sound okay. We didn't play this first, so if it doesn't play that's okay. But. Mm -hmm. And also not in a strong area of Wi-Fi, so hope that comes through. Join the EM Tech MOOC and explore emerging technologies for lifelong learning and success. Yep. MOOC is an acronym that stands for Massive Open Online Course. This learning opportunity will help you develop a growth mindset, enhance critical thinking skills, use technology to communicate, collaborate, express yourself creatively, and keep current in today's world. As you explore and learn, you'll develop an e-portfolio to showcase your skills, experience, and accomplishments. The MOOC is available in Coursera. Learners can earn digital badges and a Coursera Certificate of Completion. Students, faculty, and staff from any SUNY institution will be able to receive their Coursera certification for free. Enroll today. Visit suny.edu slash emtech. Okay, glad that went through. So that's just a short video. It's also available on the homepage of the website. So if you're trying to give somebody a really concise description about what this project is and how it might be useful for your needs, whether you're personal learning or to start a cohort at your library, your institution, your campus, wherever you are from. Um, that video that's on the front page of the home site is very useful for that purpose. So um, is there, are there any questions as I go through and continue to introduce the MOOC? Any questions as of yet? Feel free. It seems like we're a small enough group that people can unmute and talk if they prefer they can type them in the chat as well i had one question mm -hmm. um do the digital badges help encourage participants yes i do believe so um so we have um, been issuing badges since uh, 2012 and that's something that i really would love to do uh in-depth study on the effect of the badges. Unfortunately, I have antidotal information right now. Um, we do have a lot of data. I need to look at it and I can see changes happening and how many are being issued, how many are being claimed, more increase in how many are being shared. And what's amazing, um, how quickly when a faculty member does not receive their badge in the designated 24 hour time frame, I think we tell them 48 hours, um, we get many, many messages. Where's the badge that I earned? Um, so they are um, very, very positive. Um, we've had faculty who have put them in their tenure and promotion dossier to show that they have uh, completed the MOOC. And one other really great thing about the digital badge is when somebody does share them on their LinkedIn profile or their signature in their email or wherever, um, somebody can actually click that digital badge and it will take them to the portfolio that they've created if they've created one for the project. And somebody can actually see all of the artifacts that they've created and the reflections that they've added. So somebody, that digital badge is very beneficial to show what it was that was issued by SUNY and what it was that the um, participant created to earn that badge and the goals. Thank you for that question. 
Um, we'll talk a little bit about the distribution of some of those badges a little later on too. Thank you for that question. And um, in, yep. So in the chat, Julie oh, asked, is it free for everyone, including like non-SUNY? So um, the project is free for everyone in this world. Um, you do get um, a benefit when you pay the course fee. And that benefit is getting those digital badges, uh, the digital badges and the certificates. Um, there are many ways. Um, so the course fee right now, we actually uh, recently raised it up to $49. Um, but you can complete the whole course, do all the assessments, all the peer review, get to the end of the screen that says, congratulations, you've completed the course. You could take that as your evidence that you completed the course. But if you pay the course fee, you'll also get the official Coursera certificate, um, which is there are some research that are showing more value to those Coursera, Coursera based certificates. You'll also receive the SUNY digital badges offered from you know, one of the largest public um, research institutions that are available. Um, so yes, it is free for everyone. Uh, SUNY has made an agreement with Coursera that all of their faculty, staff, and students can take the entire catalog of Coursera courses. It's actually maybe 95%. They have a few that are not eligible um, for free and get the certificates. Many other institutions have done that same thing. Um, so I know um, in Tennessee, there's a, a couple, California, um, in addition, governments are partnering with Coursera. So the New York State government has a, a web page connected right from their Department of Labor um, web page that says anybody that is either unemployed or underemployed can request a Coursera account, which will make them eligible to participate and complete the 95% of the Coursera catalog at no cost. Um, so Tennessee, I think is another state, Minnesota. So you have to dig around. Um, Coursera has also um, financial aid. You just have to ask for it. And for a few courses, they will let you take it for free and also earn the, the, the certificates. So yes, anybody in this world, I will also talk a little bit later about how many people um, have taken this course. And that's quite impressive. So um, in the course, um, it's divided into two major parts. We have the MTech MOOC, that is a course offered through the Coursera platform. If you're familiar with any learning management system like uh, Blackboard or Canvas, um, it's very similar. You have a menu on the side, you have an area for content, you have an area for discussion, uh, quizzes, and you go through, there's only five modules. They could take about an hour each. And so you can get through the entire course in about five hours. You could do that same course across six months or even longer, pick it up, do an activity or two, put it down and come back and do another activity. Um, the uh, lifelong learning section, the first section, the first module, it's a little intense because we wanted to cram all those uh, the needs to understand digital literacy in that first module. Um, and uh, But then there's a lot of video content. They're all about three minutes long and they feature SUNY faculty, staff, and students from across the institution who are talking about how you might look at lifelong learning or how you might um, better understand what a growth mindset is. Or um, the other modules are the four C's of communication communication, critical thinking, uh, collaboration, and creativity. Um, so just some of the videos talk about that. Um, so in addition to the MOOC, there's also a complimentary wiki. The wiki is a database of freely available technology tools and resources. We have a um, little bit over 500 different resources that are now in the wiki. We started with about 150. Because it's a wiki, that means that others can add information and resources to the wiki. And um, 
It's socially curated. Participants can rate the tools up and down. We're actually trying to improve the visibility of the rating system so that people are more likely to rate things up to help others identify, oh, that must be a good one. That must be one that I should explore. Um, also, um, the wiki is used to create to complete the discovery exercises from the MOOC. So as you're going through the modules in the MOOC, you'll get through the communication module. Um, let me, I'll talk a little bit more about that on the next screen. But the wiki can also be used as a standalone resource. So if you just want a list of tools that are organized by um, learning objectives, and also by the four C's of 21st century learners, also organized by the um, web 2.0 type of categories. You can uh, just go to the wiki and not even use the MOOC, although I feel that they do work together very well. But when you get to the wiki, if you click on the discover tab at the top, it brings you to this page that lets you search. If you're coming from the MOOC, if you're coming in from module two, which is communication and collaboration, you'll automatically be kind of narrowed down in the choices. So instead of showing the whole 500 tools and resources, you'll see a shorter number that are specifically for communicating and collaborating. If you want to narrow down even further, the objectives filter has a few objectives that apply to each of the different uh, modules. And um, so if you are interested to create a professional identity, you can select that. And then the, the filters will go down even further. If you know you wanna work with video, you can select that and it'll narrow down even further. Um, and there's also just a, a simple search field if you wanted to put a keyword in that search field. So once you're in the um, MOOC, you're told, okay, now go select a resource. Um, in this wiki, there's about 500 different tools, tutorials, and resources. There's about two-third tools and one-third tutorials and resources. Some are just, how do you create a great screencast? Or how do you caption video? Or how do you evaluate information? Um, you know, and many other topics. So that's kind of the general idea of the wiki. And since it's a wiki, everybody in the world can contribute. It's a moderated wiki. So when somebody does come to the site, if they take um, a link and um, create an account, go in, add a tool, they can add something to the wiki. It won't be live until somebody on the team says it passes all the criteria that we're hoping to have within the sections. Mainly they should be free resources um, that are useful and, and secure and stable as much as we can tell at the quick glance, and then we will approve them. Um, I just put this slide in. I just wanna, you know, you always have to think of using technology for the purpose that you are aiming for. That's why we made it so that the objectives menu helps you choose the technologies. So you don't wanna say, well, I'm gonna make a Prezi. Well, you might wanna say, I'm gonna raise awareness. And to do that, you might choose to make a Prezi. Um, you, you might want to um, you know, change minds. And then you know, what are some of the tools that will let you help change those minds? So the tool, the technology is a tool, not an outcome. And I also just wanna mention that um, since many of these are freely available tools, many of them are not your enterprise support tools, such as Zoom, what we're using now, or Blackboard. Um, but many of those tools also have some free components to get people used to using the system. Um, so we do break our free um, criteria every once in a while, if there's something really good, um, we will incorporate it in here. So, but for the most part, I'd say 95% are free tools. But always keep in mind, you your first choice, if your campus has a tool that works well for your particular purpose, that should always be your first choice. There should never be 
um, deviation if you have the supported tools by your campus or your organization. Um, even if you do have those options, though, you often need to have um, other choices. <laughs> um, you know, things go down in the middle of a academic year, you need to be able to have an, an alternate choice to work with. Um, see, this slide is just talking about the changing face of Bloom's, Bloom's taxonomy. And the old version is on the left. Uh, Bloom's is a uh, leveled series that um, defines higher order thinking processes and skills. And then the new version, so Bloom's originally was developed in 1956. About 50 years later, um, Anderson and Crathwall et al. Um, did a revision uh, according to digital media. And they just put some tiny little changes. Can anybody um, point out what some of those changes are in these two, the old and the new version of Blooms? You can just unmute and ask and speak up or put it in the chat if you prefer. Just a couple things, uh, more action oriented. Thank you, April. Yes, that is the biggest thing. Um, and then there's one other um, point I'd like to see if I, we can, pull out from here. But in addition to action oriented, <clears throat> what are the what there's another change that has been made uh, dealing with the very top of the pyramid, actually. Any thoughts there? What's different? Addition of creating at the top. Yes. So in the original version, evaluation was considered the highest order highest level of thinking, and now if we can create. And I think, thank you very much for that, Susan. Um, the creating aspect is something that the web allows us to do more easily and spread that information and creativity much more further. I just wanted to share that. And just trying to drill home, not hammer, not wrench. Uh, um, just again, another analogy about how you should not have the technology drive your choice, your purpose should drive your choice. You don't go into a hardware store and say, hmm, oh, this is a nice hammer. What can I make with a hammer? You go in and you have a plan and you say, I'm going to build a birdhouse. What tools do I need to effectively make a, a birdhouse? And that will help you do that. Um, so, MTech. It has a lot of resources to help you find and create open educational resources. There are catalogs of open educational resources throughout. We have one of those categories on the side as OER. Um, we talk about how students can create open educational resources as well using the tools that they find inside of MTech. And um, this is just the URL again and the formal word um, title for the project, State University of New York Exploring Emerging Technologies for Lifelong Learning and Success. The URL, if you didn't write it down before, um, might wanna write it down again. I will put it into the chat again and hopefully you can bookmark it and go there and explore further on your own time. Hopefully participate in the entire MOOC, and we would love to see cohorts from the libraries um, to um, participate. Cohorts are a really good way to kind of initiate this project at your library. We had some folks that would just you know gather together on their lunch hour, bring their laptops together, and as they're enjoying their lunch, they're sharing stories and sharing examples of things that they are creating using the tools that they're finding. And then once somebody finds something and, and shares it to the discussion area in the course and says, oh, look at what I made, this is cool. Somebody else comes across and says another positive comment. Others will then go and take a closer look. So um, on the uh, website, um, the there is a place where you can uh, share information about MTech under the uh, 
about menu. There are flyers that you can print up. There are the videos that you can share. There's email announcements that you can tailor, uh, copy, paste, and change to make your own message. Um, we encourage you all to please share with your libraries. There's some nice little business cards you can keep on your front counters. And I just want to end the kind of the formal part of this. Hopefully you'll have a lot of questions for me as well. We need your help. Um, we want to share info about MTech. So please use those resources under the about menu to share with others, share through social networks, contribute tools and resources. We know that the list is not extensive. It is um, robust, but it could be even more robust. Um, we encourage anybody who completes the course to become an MTech fellow. And as a fellow, you are eligible to earn another SUNY digital badge. And that fellow, um, in order to become a fellow, you're asked to provide tech support or chat support in the course to at least one person in each module, each of the five modules. After you do that, you're um, on board as a fellow, but we hope you stay on as long as you can and some people come back and forth every once in a while. It's that encouraging community that provides a lot of motivation for folks to go through. Um, we're also looking for scholarly researchers. Like I said, the badges idea, if anybody wants to work with us, um, we will be happy to share the de-identified badge information and work with you to try to write up an article. What does digital badging mean to the, you know, the global community who is learning about digital skills. Um, and we are always in need of grant writers. So if you click that link on the slides, which I will share, um, it will tell you how you can send, send me an email and say, I'm, I'm interested to partner and we can talk from there. So that's kind of the formal presentation. I can easily pull up the website and show you around. And we have a lot of statistics on the site. I think there's just one piece on the site that I do want to show you um, to make sure that you go there on your own time. Hopefully I got that right. And so under this, um, Robin, we're not seeing your host grade there. There you go. Okay, and I think I'm still cutting off some of it. Do you get the general idea here? Um, under the main uh, menu, and we're actually working to improve this in the near future. Oh, actually, I want the impact. Um, under impact menu, we have a lot of statistics that we've collected. Also, I'm on a laptop, so I don't have as much screen real estate as I normally do. I want to see people as well. Um, so we have um, the badges and the certificates that have been issued. We have given out 4,000 badges in the five years that the MTech project has been around. People accept them, about 73% accept the badges and post them to their social media pages. 85% um, to LinkedIn, Facebook is less um, um, used but still use Twitter and other. Um, you can click on a link to learn more about what people are saying about their experience. And there's a couple digital videos there. And what else I wanna show you? Just a few more things and then we can have a conversation. Um, this is the, the global reach of the project. So right now, um, we are close to 33,000 learners who have enrolled across the, across the globe. Um, most are in New York. They're the ones that we've created this for. They pay our salary. Um, but also in uh, India, we have quite a big following. Mexico, the country of Singapore, um, has quite a few people who have enrolled. And again, the cohort model. In Singapore, somehow the information 
um, got to the civil service in Singapore. So we had firefighters who were training other fighters, policemen, um, and all their civil service um, trainers were going through during the height of COVID, taking the course and sharing their e-portfolios with us. Um, we have a breakdown of the different types of audiences. So let me make this a little bigger. Um, so we have about 25% instructors, 25% um, staff of institutions, 12% uh, outside of academia, um, another that these were employed, another 19% who are seeking employment and about 20% students. So it's nice broken up pretty evenly. Um, and then some results, uh, to what extent does participating help enhance their lifelong learning habits? We have 75% say um, quite a bit and very much. And I'm just gonna give you one more in here. Um, the intent to contribute, continue to use the wiki after the for formal participation ends, 71% um, say they will be doing that. Uh, here's a screen that shows a little bit about the badges. To what extent did the badges add value to your experience? And um, quite a bit, very much. We have about 58. And um, I should go back and try to make a five year span. And I'm sure that these numbers are increasing. 67% um, value the Coursera certificates. Um, and one other one, um, the comfort level is one that I like showing. So 75% said the project increases their comfort level. So I think I've gone over the time for show and tell, but um, I think we have time now to hopefully address some questions and I will try to um, maybe get somebody's help uh, if there were questions that have gone through the chat that I miss? Um, um, none that we miss, but I just put out a call to remind people they can send out questions. I have a ton, so I can keep asking questions so you guys get tired of hearing me. Um, I'll start with the first one. You said that MTech was um, grant funded initially. Yes. Is it still grant funded and how are you maintaining it? Yeah, that, that's the $64,000 question. Um, it started out with um, um, SUNY funding and our chancellor at the time said, I have 64 campuses and all 64 campuses are trying to do the same thing. What can we do to create systemness? And so she created an innovative technology grant fund that had supported the campuses working together. That was one of the criteria you had to work together to develop something that would be mutually beneficial for more than one campus. And so that got us through the five years of faculty professional development. When we switched to create it to a MOOC, we got another similar grant. Actually, we got two rounds of that grant funding, some grant funding through my university when we went to a new general education system. Um, E-portfolios are part of um, the graduation requirements at the University of Buffalo. And so to have students learn more about creating their digital footprint through this project was critical. And so they gave us some grant money. We've received a, a few other smaller grants, but we are always on the grant funding market. Uh, that last slide that I had showed um, that said we need partners, we need partners that have grant writing skills. None of us on the team, I think, were really heavy grant writers. So I would love to hear from people to come forward and help us with that. Okay. Um, um, so right now we kind of run without funding. We get really close to some of the really good grants, but really close isn't cutting it. Yeah, it's a story of my life. <laughs> <laughs> um, how often are the modules updated and reviewed? And part two, mm -hmm. if a tool stops being supported or it gets outdated, does it get removed? Yes. So big idea of why we created a wiki instead of just a straight website 
is so that we can have a crowdsourced system help us understand when the tools are um, updated, um, you know, that we can keep adding new tools. And so that's a continual basis. Mm -hmm. um, looking at the tools to find out if any have gone by the wayside. Sometimes you'll hear about that, you know, reading an article. I'll hear, you know, Flipgrid has changed to Flip. So we can easily open it up and change that record and it's updated. When things are, you know, gone away, they can easily be removed. And so it's a continual process. We have not updated the videos in since it was launched about five years ago. And we are, we are having a, a desire to update those. But even if you do go through them all, we wrote those so that they would be uh, sustainable. We did not mention any of the tools. Maybe Google got mentioned in one of them. Um, but we talk about the general ideas behind developing video, um, the general ideas about editing photos. We tried to keep all of the things that might go away out of the videos. Um, and so we try to, it's pretty, pretty darn um, up to date, I would say, you know, because we're also able to easily, there's a new tool out there. We're able to just take a minute or two and add it. Okay. Um, we're, also, we're also doing the checking for errors, you know, 404 when they go away. You know, so if somebody didn't tell me, I'll find it that way. Okay. That was my next question. Um, you showed your map where you had participants from all over the world. So are the modules in different languages or can they be created in different languages? Um, one of the benefits of the Coursera system and even um, the Blackboard system is that um, they're able to be displayed in different languages. Coursera also has volunteers who translate the courses. Um, so, you know, I think the, the human translated courses are, much, are a better quality but when they're using the artificial intelligence language change to show the videos in a different language or just uh, using uh, Google Translate to translate the pages, it can work in, in different languages. And it has been interesting. Um, I try to stay in, in the community and provide feedback and support for the participants. And so it's interesting. You can see people that are struggling with their English, but, and they mention, you know, that they are not an English speaker, but they can, um, you know, make their um, artifacts available. So we had one girl, um, I forget where she was, Czechoslovakia maybe, and she had this beautiful poster created. And I asked her if she could use Translate to recreate it in English so that all of the other participants can understand it as well. And she was able to do that. She was not required, um, but she did that so that other people can understand. Okay, uh, I'm checking the chat real quick. All right, so I know we talked a little bit about the tools. Are there any of the modules cover skills like resume building, cover letters, things like that? Yes, and we just added um, a new section, I'm actually on the wiki here. And then again, I'm gonna try to squish things around so you can see it a little better. Um, so we just added a new category. And the new category is new to tech. Um, so the um, uh, the the importance of increasing digital skills to the general population became very self-evident during COVID, and having many people not able to understand the you know how to do a teleconference call so that they can connect to their doctor 
or how to order something online through Amazon so they have food in the house. Um, and so this project is also, it was originally geared towards college level students, faculty, staff, and others. Um, but it's very well suited to anybody that just wants to inc increase their own digital skills. And so by the, you know putting in this new to tech, you can find just tons of digital skill libraries that talk about uh, how do you use a mouse? How do you turn on, um, you know, how do you get virus protection? Um, and things like that. Um, So there's there's a ton of tools in there that um, you know are for somebody who's very new. There's also a section we added called the essential toolbox, and what that is that's kind of more in the line for faculty um, who might um, you know just need 500 tools are too much for them, so they want to be able to know what are some of the basics. Kahoot is really popular um, to create quizzing and WhatsApp is really useful across the world for communication. Um, and uh, we are kind of retooling this a little bit as well. Um, we have two kind of special interest groups down at the bottom here. We just started adding in K-12 specific apps and tutorials. Uh, mainly we were thinking college level, uh, but now we are thinking that the K-12 instructors at least should be able to get what they need out of here. And also virtual exchange in COIL. Um, virtual exchange asks um, instructors to create um, opportunities for their students to work together. So I might have a class in the US, somebody else might have a class in Spain, and by choosing the um, virtual exchange coil, you'll see some of the tools that might be really useful in that type of scenario. And it just so happened, I saw one of the participants mention that uh, they were from Barcelona. Um, I will be in Barcelona in about two or three weeks sharing information about um, the project. Um, and uh, so look forward to meeting you then hopefully. So, so just um, we're constantly adding on when we think that there's something that can be uh, used for, you know, in a better way. Okay, and I only have one question and so if anyone has anything in the chat, feel free. But my one last question, are there any modules that you've noticed are just way more popular than the other modules? Um, I think I'm gonna change the word module to category. Category, okay. So um, the modules are based on these four C's of 21st century learners. So the NEA, uh, did a survey of employers and said, what are the uh, most critical skills that somebody needs when they hire them? And it pretty much broke down to communication and collaboration, creativity, and critical thinking. We feel that lifelong learning is most critical because in today's day and age, you have to be a lifelong learner. What's you're learning today, a month from now, it's going to be different. You know, you try learning all about some of the new technologies, in another month or two, you're going to be learning about newer new technologies. You have to understand the principles and then apply those principles. Um, so the, these are the modules of the MOOC. Um, and then the category that I think is most popular is the video category. And you, you, I'm just uh, pointing out that once you use this um, search, if you haven't reset it, you have to just uncheck something. So right now we have only the video items selected and there are a total of 121 video resources. 
So I think that is the most popular um, aspect. People are looking to create videos, um, but also within the course, since people can get an additional badge by creating their um, pers pers professional footprint, um, the ePortfolio tools are another very popular section. So if I uh, deselect the video and select the ePortfolios, we have about, I think, uh, 41 ePortfolio tools. And we suggest a few of them um, in, the, in the text that we say Google Sites is probably one of the great ones. So I'd say that's another one that's really popular. Okay. Well, thank you, Robin. Okay, last okay. call for questions. All right. I'm not seeing anything. But this was good. We're getting good feedback in the chat. So I learned a lot. So I'm definitely going to check it out. Yeah, I would definitely love to hear from anybody. Um, I can work with you and your library, no matter how small or how large, to try to set up a program that runs from your library. And um, or if you're interested just to help us write grant proposals, write yourself into the grant proposal. Um, if you're interested to help analyze what we're doing with badges, we would really love to hear from you. Okay. All right. Yeah, so. You're probably watching the chat. Lots of thank yous. Yeah, yeah, positive thank feedback. you. Thank you. And like I said, I will get the recording out by the end of the day, Friday, hopefully sooner. Sounds good. Thank you everybody for your time. All right. Thank you. Bye-bye.